It's the Bulls Chat Podcast. I'm Joe Malone, and with me, the head coach, the general manager of the North Iowa Bulls, Todd Sandin. Coach, good morning. Thank you. Good morning, Joe. Thank you. Appreciate the opportunity. It was a uh, a, a brand new rivalry weekend for the North Iowa Bulls on Friday night and Saturday night, a home and home series against the Austin Bruins, and um, it did not disappoint for fans. Well, I, I mean, granted, two wins would have been nice, but as far as action, as far as competitiveness, there was a lot of that this weekend. Yeah, it was, it was a fun weekend, and obviously uh, th- those were two pretty good hockey games. I think our fans, uh, uh, those who travel on Saturday night, they saw a great weekend of hockey. Yeah, well, it started Friday night, and it was a back-and-forth battle uh, between uh, the Bruins and the Bulls, and it ended up uh, going to a five-round shootout where the Bruins uh, got the better of the Bulls in that one to uh, walk away with the 4-3 victory but um just some of the stats on this one uh two of austin's three goals in regulation came off the power play and they're at something like over 40 percent conversion rate on their power play this season uh talk to me about that and and knowing that going in like if 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 this team gets on the power play they can be dangerous yeah no obviously and and they got the first goal of the game on the power play we got a a early too many men call which uh was Hotly contested throughout the weekend because we had the uh, similar staff on, on Saturday night, but um, yeah, th- that's you know that's part of early season stuff too, with just trying to dial in the discipline of your group and not give teams extra chances on the power play. And obviously, uh, those who know that Austin team's a, a veteran laden team and, and um, pushed for a playoff spot last year, so giving them extra chances on the on special teams is probably not going to benefit you too many too many times. Now, even though the Bulls would go on to lose uh, in the shootout after a scoreless overtime period, probably the loudest roar I've heard at the Mason City Arena um, in the couple of games we've had so far this season was um, 43 seconds left in the third period. Vlasic uh, getting the game-tying goal uh, shorthanded, I believe, uh, unless I'm getting my, my stats all mixed up here. Uh, but that that was a moment right there where it's like, oh, baby, we got a chance now. Uh, talk to me about the excitement level, seeing the puck go in that late in the game. Well, I mean, we we didn't even – I don't think we had our goalie pulled for the extra attacker at that time either. I mean, we were probably in the midst of, of doing that. And to, to tie a game late like that, especially in a good hockey game where it's back and forth and – we got down and then battled back. I mean, that was really exciting for, for Sean and our bench and team uh, to get that game tied up. Well, and I guess even though the game may not have gone the Bulls' way um, at the final, uh, getting just one point instead of two, that's still something where it's like, hey, if you keep playing, you keep pushing, good things can happen. You know, that that's that's kind of been this team. They just don't quit. They don't. They, they haven't shown us where they're willing to give up a game. Um, and, and it was clearly evident there Friday night and tying that game up late. And, and we've had other situations where we've been up a couple, got down by a couple, and then still just this team just seems to play the full 60 minutes and try to figure out a way to win every night. And they did figure out a way to win on Saturday night, a 4-2 win at Austin. And uh, just kind of the reverse of Friday night, Friday night, Austin able to do things on the power play. Saturday night, unable to do things on the power play. And the result goes in the favor of the Bulls. Um, several times uh, the Bulls built up a, a two-goal lead. Uh, final one coming on a shorthand. That's the shorthanded goal that I had in my notes. Uh, Michael Messick picking up one with uh, just under two minutes to play to give that two-goal buffer. And uh, the fans, first chance to really travel for the uh, for the season and uh, a lot of cowbells uh, at Riverside Arena on Saturday night. Yeah, it was th- that was especially getting that goal late in that game, uh, giving you a two goal cushion was just a relief, I think. And it, it was a uh, amazing play between Greg Japshin and Michael Messick to finish that off uh, with a high shot beat in the Austin goaltender. Now, one thing I noticed, kind of watching in between the whistles, uh, not during the game action, is. Uh, some of the the players on the Bulls and uh, trying to uh, I don't know if coach is the right word call them down channel but talk to and communicate with their teammates like after a penalty would happen I would see um, maybe one of the captains uh, you know take a moment and just say hey 
relax, calm down, play our game, that sort of stuff. Do you like seeing that from your team? Oh, a hundred percent. I think that that's uh, something that we've noticed in this group that the locker room bond and the, the player to player bond is already pretty firmly entrenched with this group. It, this has been a, it, as early in the season as we are, th- this group is at probably mid season form with the way they interact with each other. And it's always, always so positive. Like we, we haven't had, any negativity on our bench for the first six, seven games here. Now, is that um, what's the dynamic there? Is that something where they have free will to kind of uh, talk to their teammates, coach them up, calm them down, or is that something you want to handle or have no, someone else handle? You know what? As long as it's positive, Joe, I, I think that's all good stuff. Um, you know, obviously, in in athletics, I mean, you get you get more from your peers than you do oftentimes from coaches, so. If players are reinforcing coaches' messages or just like you say, just, hey, relax, we're going to get through this, just calm down, let's go to work, and we'll get through it. So when when you hear that kind of stuff, that's where coaching, me as a coach, I'll just take a step back. If the kids are delivering a message and it's in a positive way, that, that they're, they're doing some of the work for us. Now, next up for the Bulls is a, uh, a road trip in uh, I believe the longest one or one of the longest ones you're going to be taking to Minot to take on the uh, Minotauros. And um, they they packed their place for their home opener last weekend uh, against Austin. 1,800 people there. Uh, they split against the Bruins. So trying to figure out in this early season, you know, what, what teams are. Um, what else can you tell us about uh, Minot? I don't know. It's, you know, it, it's early and we'll, we'll get into grinding on the film with them probably starting later today and into tomorrow and Wednesday. Obviously with that kind of trip, it's a early travel. So we'll leave, we'll leave on Thursday. But, um, like we know with, with the rest of the Central Division teams, they're going to be a good skating club and, and get up and down the rink. So, I mean, it, it'll come down to hopefully we're, we're good in our discipline and we don't allow them a bunch of, you know, power play opportunities where special teams come into play. And we've got to be a bit better on the power play, and that's that's one of the focuses for us this week. Now, a uh, couple of uh, highlights, players making college commitments. Um, Messick, times two, uh, Michael Messick and Jack Messick uh, committing to play NCAA Division One hockey. Tell us about um, their choices and how that process works. I, I tell you what, we're, we're so excited that uh, – uh, Michael and Jack Messick committed Michael to Northern Michigan University and, and Jack to Ferris State University, uh, both Michigan schools in their home state. So they get to play hockey, uh, uh, college hockey close to home. Um, when you look at it, it's probably a bit more of a process or has been, been a bit more of a process for Jack. He's in his third year of junior hockey um, and, and has been working towards this for a couple of years now with Michael. Um, he is an absolute um gem of a prospect and a player for us so we're not we're not very surprised that he committed early and um to to an ncaa division one school i mean we we expected that um and it's good for those kids to get those commitments it it kind of frees them up mentally too so now they just go play and help other teammates get commitments so we're excited about those guys uh getting that done for themselves I'm very proud to be part of the team uh, that they're on to get it done with. Yeah, it's almost like you read my mind with the follow-up question was, you know, does that take some weight off their shoulders and let them just go play? Yeah, you know, it it certainly does because at this level, that's the ultimate goal of every player on our team is to be an NCAA Division I athlete. So when you get that commitment, it certainly does. It frees you up mentally, emotionally to just go out and be the best player that you can be. Uh, head coach, general manager of the North Iowa Bulls, Todd Sandin, uh, thank you so much for the conversation. Um, it, it's awesome getting a chance to talk Bulls hockey with you each week. Of course, Joe. We appreciate the opportunity. That is the head coach GM of the North Iowa Bulls, Todd Sandin, on the Bulls Chat Podcast.